Well, we begin with three big movers this afternoon. Our team, of course, is here to break it down for you. Josh Lipton, standing by in Cisco earnings. That stock down nearly 3%. Seema Modi digging in on TripAdvisor, but we've got to kick it off with news that broke in the last hour on MGM. Contessa Brewer back at CNBC HQ with some numbers and a big executive departure. Contessa. Yeah, that's right, Brian. Big news from MGM Resorts. Chairman and CEO Jim Murren is leaving. He's been at the helm of this organization since 2012. In fact, was mentored by founder Kurt Kerkorian and will remain in this post, I'm told, until a successor is found. This comes at a time fraught with uncertainty for the company. Its casinos are closed in Macau because of coronavirus. Far East visitors aren't playing Baccarat in Las Vegas the way they used to. That led last quarter to an 18 percent drop in table games. Those headwinds have caused the company to withdraw its full year guidance. It's expending massive energy, effort and dollars to secure a gaming license in Japan for an integrated resort. Its new casino in Springfield, Massachusetts is struggling. And Refinitiv and S&P were out with a note questioning MGM's credit and its ability to sustain long term coronavirus disruption without raising its risk of default. And then you have activist investors like Keith Meister, who was named to the board last year, really agitating for change here. $300 million in big cost-cutting initiatives at MGM Resort. They're selling premier properties like the Bellagio and MGM Grand on the Strip. This is a company, Brian, in the midst of upheaval. The call has just started. I'm going to jump on. I'll bring you back any headlines that I find. Yeah, please do. Contessa, thank you very much. All right, let's talk about this, guys. Not a segment we talk about too much, but Tim... Kind of an odd departure in a sense. The MGM, yeah, the stock up 18% over six months, which is good, not as good as the market. It's outperformed Las Vegas Sands. Not like this company's been tanking. No, and as it should. It's certainly with the focus that's been on Macau. Remember, MGM reminding audience, it, they're about 30% of the revenues are coming from China, whereas, you know, win is 75%. So very different profile on risk. Um, as was just talked about, the fact that MGM has been doing everything they can to improve their balance sheet makes this stock a lot more defensive. So again, the sale uh, of the grand, they sold their property, I think, at yeah, 15, point, uh, 15 and three quarters times multiple uh, uh, on EBITDA, which is, which is very attractive. And I think Think something that gets them down to that one times leverage that they were trying to do. So um, I think casinos that are thrown around here, a lot of these stocks were breaking out before we got into coronavirus. And again, those that actually are exposed, uh, I like casinos. Here. Yeah, I should have said this, Carrie. Wynn Resorts up eight and a half percent in a year. MGM's up twice that. I mean, it's again, it's it's not like this has been some horrible underperformer. No, well, there's one thing in the release today that was really interesting, the tender offer that, that MGM announced. So they're doing $1.25 in a tender off, a Dutch tender. So you can somewhere between 29 and 34. So they're basically giving you somewhat of a floor for at least some portion of the con company, even while they're saying we have no idea what the outlook is based on coronavirus. That's sort of interesting to me that they're willing to do that at a time of such uncertainty. It sort of goes to your point of, I mean, they must also think the stock's undervalued if they're willing to step up in that big way right now. It's interesting. A couple Fridays ago, Scott hosted the show, and we were it was probably not the peak necessarily of coronavirus, but obviously we were talking about it. And Las Vegas Sands was sort of vacillating around the 65 level, and we had talked about that being your level for an entry point, being that that was a previous high back over the summer. And Scott questioned us correctly, why would you step in here? And to Tim's point, because a lot of these names have gotten bludgeoned on the back of it. I mean, LVS was absolutely breaking out to the upside prior to this, and we talked about that 65 level. Now here at 71, I think it does take out that recent high of 75, and it's cheaper than MGM at 19 times, whereas MGM is probably a premium in the space, close to 22 and a half. So I'm not saying ditch MGM here, but I am saying stay long LVS. Well, the idea being is that eventually, hopefully sooner than later, coronavirus will be a footnote in history. Let's hope sooner than later. And the one thing we've learned about the consumer, whether it's the American consumer or somebody in Macau or wherever else there's a casino, if they want to go, they're going to go. And they're going to come back quickly. And the consumer's healthy. And the consumer, at least, we can talk all we want about household debt and certainly some of the sensitivities there are to interest rates. But, but if you think about where casinos were after the financial crisis in 2008 into 9, the consumer was in a totally different place. They hadn't, re they hadn't repaired the balance sheet. And, and that was not a place to come in and buy casinos. Again, so as you pointed out, this is, this is a hiatus. This is certainly going to be an awful February. Uh, gross gaming revenues in January were down 11.3%. They're going to be significantly worse in February for those exposed to Macau. 
But this is not something that doesn't correct itself, I think, as you get through into the second quarter, assuming we get through this. And I know that's that it may be insensitive to the to the to the health issues that are out there. But we've seen this before in terms of Asian assets coming through the, the, uh, the SARS virus. Yeah, because and I guess I would assume, Tim, you would say and I don't want to throw anything on our coverage coming up in a couple of weeks when the next earnings season is out. But you got to just write off the first quarter, right? I mean, first quarter, you For basically sure. ignore. Right. 